down to the beat, y'all. Hey. No, no. Hello, hello. Oh, I am loud. Holy crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> hello, hello. I put the mic away from myself. Welcome to the stream, my friends. Welcome back. It's your boy, Blue. Raven, welcome to the stream. Oliver, welcome to the stream. Patrick, exclusive 808. Grant, dope, but welcome to the stream. Vabha, welcome to the stream, my friends. Sam Russell, welcome back. Hippocratics, RJ Flight, Captain Bombosa is in the building. Good to see you, man. Flanks, welcome back. Oliver Aliazon, welcome back to the stream. Ewo, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. Yes, that is the weirdest fuel truck I think I've ever seen. I agree. Me, some Ali. The bridges look messed up. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you choose. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Yes, 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 yes. There's a plane taking off right there above us. This is Explain. Let's do it one more time, guys. Microsoft Flight Simulator comes out publicly for the rest of us in just a few days. So this may be our last X-Plane stream for a while. Yes, I said a while. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. Um, so yeah, looking uh, forward to that. But until then, we work what we got. I do have a motivational quote of the day for us today uh, to get us kicked off and started. Hopefully you guys are having a great week and enjoying all the uh, the content being posted. Where is it at? Where is it at? Here it is. I've said this one before, but it's probably been over a year since I've used this, this quote. Set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you grow into the person that can. One more time for those who are a little bit slower. Set a goal. Set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you grow into the person that can. I believe in that 100%, baby. That's today's motivational quote of the day. So yes, tier, tier, tier. Today we're on X Plane 11. Sadly, I was not uh, one of the privileged few um, that are allowed to, uh, you know, stream Microsoft Flight Simulator today. I am still under NDA, so I can't even discuss a lot of things. I can only discuss the stuff that's already been spoken from, you know, whether it be in a Sobo, Microsoft, or one of the other content creators. So I can't uh, show you or mention any original thoughts uh but you know what i mean today we're in a350 for the first time though so this is brand new to me this plane has been out for a while this is the flight factor a350 whiskey bra whiskey x-ray whiskey bravo whatever that means um and honestly it's a pretty beautiful plane i have to say um i i, I gotta be honest with you i've been sleeping on this plane this plane has been a bit underrated in my own book i i was not really looking forward to this plane when it's uh, you know announced that it was being updated and uh, I really kind of underrated it I, I will say so today we'll be flying it from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles we're gonna be on VATSIM today uh, won't be on pilot edge and the reason why is because I just learned to fly this plane like this morning uh, and I don't feel comfortable with some of the FM FMS or MCDU systems that I need to know uh, to be um, knowledgeable enough to fly this on pilot edge so we're not doing it on pilot edge but I want to say yesterday we had a very bad landing matter of fact we have a really bad landing streak i should say um yeah like the last three no the last four it's been a while since we've had a, a decent good landing so today hopefully we're gonna break that bad landing streak yes everybody's wishing me well i'm gonna have better landings yes yes please smooth landings everyone i hope i hope i'm hope i'm gonna try uh we're back on the tca uh airbus thrustmaster side stick um, so it's a bit different obviously it's I've had more practice with that than having a honeycomb So it's a little bit better odds, but it still not doesn't mean that we're gonna have a you know guarantee good landing So I'm gonna do my best today and uh, stick around and we'll see how it does, how it goes when we get to LA today So let's go ahead and get the aircraft set up and ready to go um, uh, Again, I've been liking I've been enjoying this plane so much uh, Raven yes, there was a guy last night and uh, I'm gonna try not to talk too much 
while setting the plane up. But there was a guy last night who was streaming it. We were pretty sure he uh, he broke the NDA because he was streaming too early. Uh, I think he was a, he, he he thought that it was a certain time and it wasn't because nobody else was streaming Microsoft that at last night. But uh, it was funny. He obviously does not do flight sims. Uh, we looked them up. We did research, and he looks like he mainly does like first-person shooters. So he's definitely a gamer and not a simmer. But he's a uh, he's apparently established i don't know what he plays but anyways point is it was funny to watch somebody who never flies flight sim actually try to get into the simulator and fly a 787 so you know didn't even start with the seven says the 172 just went straight to the 787 anyways we're gonna get the aircraft started today uh murfinator carl johnson welcome to the stream man ricky welcome back good to see you, man just yarn welcome back oliver good to see you and daru welcome to the uh blue arrow uh charters by the way i saw you uh jumped in the fs economy so glad to have you my friend fs economy does work on microsoft flight simulator so uh looking forward to continuing our fse journeys there so anyways let's get the airplane set up and i'm trying to take the shades off it makes it a weird sound so that i can see uh well so here we go we got i'm gonna turn all the basically gonna turn everything off or on yeah lights out basically lights out on everything from all the way from top to bottom boom 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 and oh this i had a pro oh, i had a problem with with the uh, eight deers earlier i think my setting under options uh yeah i'm gonna hit to zoom only it doesn't like this the scroll wheel support for some reason it does not really appreciate it so uh the doors open doors are open all right cool yes practice makes perfect absolutely so you know he needs people like us to make tutorial videos <laughs> i mean I've, you know he was streaming right as a as a new new to flight sim you know what i mean he could be a pilot someday it's just his first time i mean, think about it think about the first time that you got to a flight simulator i'm pretty sure it was very unlegit right so you know we were all laughing at him which you know was fun he was he was laughing with us as well um, but we all have to start somewhere and uh, he's just one representation of probably a million other people who are going to try Microsoft Flight Simulator for the first time ever as their first ever flight sim. So I'm, uh, you know, next week when um, the airways are full of Microsoft Flight Sim Simulator live streams, there's going to be quite a few people who stream other games and they're established in those other games or they just never streamed ever. Uh, and they're gonna jump in as a complete noob to, noob to streaming and noob to flight sim, and it's gonna be entertaining to watch. So I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun no matter what, man. And I'm gonna turn the arm the uh, emergency brakes. Sorry, emergency brakes. Arm the emergency signs. We'll turn the seatbelt signs on. We're all we are flying for our air hauler airline again today, guys. So we will be um, loading in real passengers for this flight. Our overhead looks good. We don't have the AP one yet, but I'm gonna try to save some fuel. Let's wait to get to everything, everybody on board, and then we'll fire up the APU and get the air conditioning running. You feel me? All right. One thing we want to do, we did hit the, the, the uh, IRS. All right. So I, I, eight years is already starting up. That takes a little bit of time. So I want to make sure you get that started. Uh, we're gonna to go to FMS one. No, here it is. In it, initiation page. Flight number today is going to be, uh, somebody throw me a random number in the chat. First number in the chat, ask me our flight number today. Give it to, give it to me real quick. All right, so we're leaving from, uh oh, hold on. It needs to be a four digit number, please. KSLC to, uh oh, KSLC seven. Okay, I need four digits. <laughs> One, six, six, four. All right, there's a number. All right, today's flight number will be Come on. There it is. <laughs> DAL1664. That's our flight number today. All right, our alternate. I don't know what alternate is. Alternate is Ontario. Kilo, Oscar, November Tango. Uh, no company route, none of that stuff. We'll be cruising at 40,000. Flight level 400 today. Uh, our CI or cost index will be a niner and niner. We're gonna be blazing the heck out of here, baby. Um, and then, um, before I mean, it's, we could go ahead and do a departure. Why not? Runway 16 left, where we'll be departing today. Uh, the SID, well, which is actually new to the A350 since the last update, Zions 1 via Echo Hotel Kilo. And I'm gonna turn the music down just a little bit because I feel like it might be a little bit overwhelming. All right, that should be better. Not really anything to listen to in the cockpit right now since we're setting stuff up. But again, we are on VetSim, so if you would like to join us, you can. That is possible. 
All right, cool. That's settled. That's our departure. All in there like that right there. I love it. Uh, let's see. Let's go to... Let's just scroll down. Yeah, and we'll click on that last waypoint. EHK. And then there's an airway. No, we'll be direct to Laker. Insert next waypoint. Yeah, this is my confused face. What are you trying to tell me? Yes, yeah, erase. And uh, can I, uh, let's, uh, let's just click here. Can I just click here? No. Okay, we'll try that again. EHK, enter next waypoint. There it is. I was like, why did you do that? All right, so after EHK, I'm gonna go straight to Laker um, waypoint, L-A-K-R-R. And that'd be manual. Hit apply. Uh, insert. Beautiful. All right, next. I wonder how long until we get an A350 on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just, just out of curiosity. I wonder if anybody's working on one. Well, actually, we do know somebody's working on one. But I wonder how long it's going to take them to finish it. Uh, Airways, Quebec. Eight. Eight. Enter. And that's going to go to uh, Hockman which is H, Hotel Alpha Kilo Mike November. I'm gonna talk to you in that language because you need to know it anyways. All right, and we'll hit that into the flight plan. Click on LAX, and we have the arrival da, 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 star. Okay, I have to put the runway first, I guess. All right, runway will be, I honestly don't know. Let me see, what does Simbrief tell us to do? The almighty sim brief. What would you like? Two five left. All right, two five left. So we're landing then, and uh, we'll go to the star. Okay, I have to do approach first. All right, cool. Uh, two five left. ILS. Now star. Okay, star. The angel. Yeah, yeah. Angel four, and then via. Angel actually. No, Hawk, Hawkman, which is not in here. So no via none. And transition Hackman, Hackman. Make sure I actually select. Yeah. So empty. Add, add that to our temporary flight plan, and add that to our flight plan, and we'll continue. All right, flight plan is done. Beautiful. That was actually a lot quicker than I intended to make it. So there are a few discontinuities in there, but those are mostly, I believe, uh, vectors. Yeah, um, let's just make sure there's none in the place they shouldn't be. So yeah, those are, I think that one discontinuity is in the beginning in our departure where we're going to be vectored, which there is not going to, probably not going to be any ATC out here in Salt Lake City, which is fine. Uh, it be a bit more relaxing today. Uh, yeah, that's cool. All right, so now we need to load up people, right? Uh, let's actually go get our, um, let's get our perf page up and we'll get that ready. We'll go over here to our EFB. And we'll go over to the, uh, cat, da, 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 what, what am I looking for? Ground service? No, it's airplane. Airplane and then uh, passengers. So passengers. So according to Air Hauler, again, guys, we're using Air Hauler 2. Uh, doing an Air Hauler 2 flight. So from Salt Lake City to, um, where are we going? Los Angeles. Um, there's a 1,868 estimated travelers per day on this route, which is crazy. It's the highest number I've ever seen between two locations on Air Hauler. Um, we're going to have 200 people on board, uh, starting with business at 43. O only 43 people in first class. So 43. Oops, not 74. 43. There we go. 43 people in uh, first class, business class. We'll be... 25 wow nobody wants to be in business it's like go hard or go home up on this plane 23 and then uh sorry 25 is actually what supposed to be 25 and then 132 in the back all the regulars and economy was that 132 yes and that should equal 200 but i missed this one so i'm gonna put 25 what are you doing okay there we go Business, thank you. Uh, business was 25. All right, that's gonna be it. So we're gonna implement that. That uh, That is our invalid configuration. Is there not enough seats? Oh, there's not enough seats in first. Something's weird. All right, it's, yeah, it's this one. So we're gonna go minus 10 to 33. Still too many. How many seats are in first class? 12? 
Um, 18. That's enough. All right, 18. We still need to top off it. Uh, so we're going to um, downgrade a bunch of people. In that case, uh, we need... Let's try with 38. Okay, too many people now in business class. Wow. Everybody's getting downgraded to the economy. Jesus. All right, what do we have? 25 before? We'll do 30. All right, 30 is pretty darn close. I'm not sure how many people we can fit in here. Let's try 33. Got one more seat left. 30. Oh, two more. 35. There we go, 35, so business class is full. Uh, we can fit two more people in first class, 20. There we go. So we upgraded somebody, downgraded a few people, and now we still need, it looks like, what's that? 12 more, so 140, 140? I am not good with math. We need four more people now, 144. All right, that, that works. As long as it's like the, the same total number, we're good for air hauler. Now we need fuel. Uh, as far as fuel, we'll be loading up um, let's see, what does this say? Fuel will be 20, uh, da, 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 where's it at? Wow, why do we have so much fuel? 105, oh wait, so 48,000 kilograms. So that's double what we got in there right now, 48. And that's not the exact number, the exact number is 48,778. 778. All right, cool. Implement that. So the way air hauler works is it kind of adds like an e economic system to it where you can add actual passengers to the plane and you make money for each flight. It just kind of gives you a purpose, you know. Uh, all right, so our runway slope here is going to be 0.0, .0 and flap setting will be, uh, be 1. That'll give us our V speed. Uh, I should CG out of range. Uh oh. Why is that? Uh, I honestly don't know why it says CG out of range. Gross weight, GWC, headwind. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I haven't had that problem yet. Ground services, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Are we too heavy? I mean, I know the plane doesn't match perfectly with with an air hauler, so that could be the issue. So what we'll do instead is we'll just do, uh, we're going to unload the passengers. We'll just hit medium here and implement, and uh, let's see if that if that helps. Yep, that helped. All right, cool. So it doesn't really care. All right, cool. So that's set. So our V-speeds are 150, 150, 5961. 505961. 505961. All right, so we go one. Oh my God, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? What are you actually doing, camera? Okay, thank you. Holy crap, what was that? All right, one five zero. Beautiful. One five nine. Actually, I think I got that wrong already. Something like that. Something like that. And flaps be one plus F. We taking off with Toga. Everything else in here looks okay. Uh, climb cruise. Did we put our cruise? I think we did put our cruise. We'll put our approach information in there later. Other than that, fuel load. That looks good. Uh, wind. Good, good, good. Let's check initiation. And our IRS should be aligned by now, which it is about to be finished. It looks like it's about to be done. It is done. All right, cool. That's done. And now, um, I'm not going to go through all this checklist stuff, but I do want to use it a little bit just to help me to make sure I haven't forgotten anything, because uh, yeah, I'm still new to this plane, guys. You guys know that. This is, like, literally going to be my second full flight <laughs> that we have done in this plane. All right, fuel quantity, check. Final load sheet, check. Zero fuel weight, check. Ecam, CWCG, probably not have been checked, but we're going to go ahead and say it is. Uh, external power uh, off. Why? We haven't turned the APU on yet. Let's, let's do that, actually. Um, as I go and do this thing here. 40,000. Setting up air hauler. Give me a second. And hit OK. All right. How much time is it giving us? Oh, it's like on the wrong day. Yeesh. 
All right, let's go ahead and change our settings here real quick. Uh, we should be starting at 1630. Let's set it to here, hit apply. It still doesn't like that. 160 minutes. All right, let's go ahead 60 minutes then. But now, 104, holy crap, where did I set the time to? How about now, 59, all right, I'm not waiting a whole hour. Whole hour. Let's see, 1900, sorry. That. Boarding in progress, 25 minutes, yeah, I'm not waiting that long either. <laughs> all right, let's push it in 25, there's 26. We're like basically about ready to push back right now, so I'm not gonna wait for air hauler to make us wait all this time. Come on, let's go there. What up, Marvin? Good to see you, man. Jack, good to see you, man. Ricky, what's up, man? Uh, Blue, uh, I mean, Ricky, what does not lifting everyone's NDA benefit? It's just kind of like a uh, a perk, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a, a perk, that basically, they're giving, uh, you know, these certain content creators, like, hey, we're basically partnering with you and allowing you to get a head start on uh, on your own content creation. So it's just kind of like it's a it's a it's a perk for all the people who are sh are streaming right now. So it's a it's a huge thing. It's a good thing. Like I had a same a similar deal with Thrustmaster uh, when the side stick came out, where me and a certain number of uh, other content creators had access to the TCA side stick, and we were able to stream it and, and make videos on it um, before everyone else could go in and go in and make their reviews and and buy it and stuff like that. So just kind of a perk of of working with a a developer or whatever. So. Um, it's, it's a huge deal, honestly. Like I've, there's some people I'm like, huh, I'm surprised they chose you. But then there's some other people I'm like super excited for. I'm very um, happy for them. You know what I mean? I get the APU running now. We will hit master switch here and I'll wait for that flap to open. All right, it, wow, it's like instantly open. There is no wait time. All right, start. Thank you, Logan, for the sub, for the sub, man. Welcome to the Blue Roy family. It should have popped up on the stream. All right, we're just about ready to push back, guys. Flying the uh, Flight Factor A350. I will say um, it's definitely not as good on frames as the Magnite 787. So I had to turn my uh, my texture quality and my objects down a notch, um, especially flying into into LAX. And we're still probably going to get disconnected from VATSIM for dropping below 20 frames. So that's my prediction. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's what's going to happen. When we get to LAX, I am pretty sure. But I like the plane, though. I mean, again, I have never streamed this plane. I just started flying it today. Like, I'm not kidding. Not kidding when I say I just started flying this plane today. Um, been, been learning how to start it, get the systems running, and get everything working. Get the APU back here. I'm using the FT Sim sound pack. Uh, all right, so that is, we should be have, uh, APU is available, so we'll go to the APU Gin and APU Bleed. Beautiful. And we can shut off the external power. Four minutes until passengers are finished boarding. So I'm gonna go over to the, uh, not the passengers menu, but the ground service menu. And we'll start hiding some of these uh, trucks and things. We could just really just hit close all. Um, we'll go to ground equipment. We'll get rid of the passenger. Well, passenger is still loading. We don't need a passenger bus. We have plane at the gate config. Uh, cleaning should be done. ULD, whatever that means, is done. Don't need air conditioning anymore because we have APU. Luggage loaded. Luggage is all loaded up. We're waiting for 20 people. Fuel truck will go away. We've already filled up, ready to go. Ground power is going to start. Shut off. Shut off. Shut off. There it is. It's gone. He just landed in Salt Lake City. Hilarious, bro. You come fly with me, man. Where you at, bro? Let's go. <laughs> Um, I just landed in Salt Lake City. Like I literally, my first test flight was me landing this plane in Salt Lake City like 20 minutes ago, right before we started the stream. I was like, I gotta get a flight in. I gotta do a landing before I can, uh, you know, trust myself to fly this plane anywhere else. And yes, I am on VATSIM right now. I oughta. So yeah, man, we're using Mr. X's or short final design Salt Lake City. I'm telling you, man. 
this week is gonna be a game changer. Like, I'm just thinking about how, like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm leaving my X-Plane for good. Like, we're still gonna be doing X-Plane videos and live streams, and there's plenty of new add-ons coming out that we're gonna wanna fly and, and do stuff with. Zebo is not going away, you know what I mean? Um, but we're gonna be looking back you know, to like this week, this day, you know, these these last streams before Microsoft came out because our, our thought process will change when that game comes out and we actually get in there. I got my first look at the 787 last night and it looks beautiful. The modeling, uh, the wing flex, uh, the texturing, uh, everything just looks amazing. It doesn't have the same system's depth as like the Magnite. Um, so honestly, the Magnite is on another level. It's a higher level uh, systems wise than the, uh, the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 787, but the Microsoft version just looks better. You know, uh, I was literally flying the 787 last night on Discord. Um, so you guys should join the Discord. We do a lot of like live streams on Discord that you'll never see on YouTube or Twitch. Um, whether you join the Blue Games Discord or the Blue Arrow uh, FSE Charter Discord, uh, we like to hang out and voice chat sometimes and, uh, and do some live streaming of ourselves. But I was flying the 787 last night from somewhere to somewhere and um and in browning uh he's part of our group he was like yo somebody's streaming the 787 right now i was like let me go look so i went and looked on twitch the guy was streaming the 787 on microsoft flight simulator and i'm like looking at it comparing my sim that i'm flying currently uh to the plane that he was flying and i was like wow the difference is 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 massive right it's a huge difference between that look at this guy why is this guy standing here in front of this engine like i mean is he checking it you don't want to stay there too long, buddy. You will get sucked in there quick. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and call Mr. Better Pushback. Start pushback. We're going to have to taxi all the way to the other side of the runway. I want you to put it right there for me, please. It is huge, Adrian. Allegedly. <laughs> Watch out on Tesla NDA. I wonder what happened with that guy. Like, I wonder if, if he, I mean, he broke it. I'm pretty sure he broke it because from what I'm hearing from all the other content creators, all of their NDA lifting time is uh, is consistent. Like Chewy, um, John Fly, Oz Flight Simmer, you know, they all started streaming at the same time. And, um, and this guy was like eight hours early. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Uh, best of luck to him. Uh, which Boeing plane do I prefer, Global Flyer? Uh, 787. All right, guys, pa uh, the uh, the uh, passengers are boarded. And we are ready to go. Let's just make sure we're not missing anything on the overhead. Overhead looks as it should. We can turn a beacon. Sorry. New camera views. Beacon lights off, on. Um, let's go down here and check some things. I'm gonna turn on these systems as well as the VHF. Huh, well, let me click on it. Okay, there it is. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, we're on 1 to 2.8. Um, our squat code is actually in a weird place, it's actually on this screen. Over here, if I go to do, do, up here to hold on, how do I get there? There it is. Serve controls, and here's our squawk. And we can go to auto. Uh, actually, we go to it will do auto, and then uh, TARA will turn on the weather, all this stuff. Oh, this for the GPWS. I was looking for that earlier. All right, cool. So those are set, and uh, we're ready. Like I said. I don't know why the gate hasn't moved. Oh, it did move. Okay, good. But that door is still... Oh, we've got to shut the door. Hold on. Don't push us yet. Close all. <laughs> all right, we got it. We got it, we got it. All right, we got, it. we got it. We good. We good, baby. It's a new day. It's a new day. Another chance for another landing. All right, so uh, we're going to hit set the anti-skids. The auto uh, RTO there. Um, we'll change this to arc, and let's get ready to fire up the engines right after we put in our altimeter, which is three zero one nine. 
The scroll wheel support is really lame on this plane. 301, I have to click, 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 click. All right, cool. All right, music's coming off. And engine sounds are coming up. Headphones on, guys. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. All right, sounds up. Time to fire them up. Oh, come on. Come, come on now. Come on with the clicks, man. I tell you, I hate. I don't. Okay, I don't like that. All right, started with engine number uno. Here it goes. It looks like I'm at Golf Eight Aviation Three Sixty. No, I won't. I won't be on a. I won't be on voice chat for the stream. Sounds good. Yeah. Shout out to FT Sim. He really does his thing. I don't know how the heck he makes these sounds, but he does. Starting up engine number dose. Unable to find you no, you're unable well. to find it. We'll do it from out here. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Disconnecting to stand by. Did I not start the engine? Uh oh. Okay, let's see. Did I miss something? Oh, fault. That's not good. Don't tell me you got a failure already. Come on, bro. Come on now. We got one good engine, or we can have two. Oh, dang. Bro, you need to do something with your sim. It, it, it's crashing way Hell too often. Disconnected and bypass sim has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time. Oh, uh, maybe it's there. this here. Yeah, I bet this was this right here. That's what it was. We didn't turn it on. Alright, let's see. Yep, the fault is go oh it's still there. But it's supposed to say fault. Let's see, let's try it now. Yep, there we go. N2 and N3. Good. Beautiful. Alright, back outside. It's loud out there. It's a little loud out there. All right, we're gonna turn it back down to normal. Yeah, I think you should learn by now, bro, that uh, you, I mean, you don't wanna do anything. Well, it depends on your system, but a lot of people, you don't wanna do anything while the uh, X-plane is loading. All right, we're gonna go up to, uh, we're cru cruising at 40,000, no ATC, we're just gonna go straight up to 18. Uh, at least we're gonna set that as our, as our initial, an initial, or 19, whatever, where it stops. We got Avatab, which is actually not prepared. Um, you can see we're getting pretty low frames. This is on the inside. On the outside, I'm getting decent frames. And this is with my, with my settings turned down, which is not good. 
not good at all. I should honestly be getting minimum 40 right now with the settings that I have set right now. All right, this is where we are on the ramp. We're at uh, basically Hotel 4. We'll take Hotel all the way to 1-6 left. Looks like the, eight, the uh, AI are actually taking off on the opposite side, but we'll ignore them today. Departure is going to be the Xeons 1R nav. We'll go ahead and quickly brief the departure as we do. Uh, so we'll be taking off to the south, heading 160. Uh, climb at above 7,000 feet and then direct to Hopto. That's why that discontinuity is in our flight plan because we got to go direct uh, or, or vectors to Hopto at or above 9,000. After that, we'll hit up Zeons. From Zeons, we'll be going uh, probably this way. Yeah, it's the EHK, the Enoch VOR, and that'll be the end of our departure. The uh, last altitude restriction is at or above 14,000. Should have any problem with that at all in the A350. That's where we'll leave it for now. And we'll get the rest of the charts as we move. So make a left turn and then a right. So that's all we got to do. Park and brake is uh, released. And APU is going to come off, starting with APU, APU bleed and APU master. And then we'll turn on the runway turn off lights for taxi. Uh oh, hold on. Yeah, I don't think I like this view that I set up. Uh, and the taxi light on the nose. And flaps are already down. We can do a flight control jet. Look how tiny the CRJ looks compared to the A350. That is little. So little. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. We'll do a flight control check while we're on the move. Alright, giving us some, some power. We are moving, believe me, we are moving. Uh, we are using track IR again today. Come on. I think I need some more power to get moving. Oh, listen to her. Here we go. Also, I'm using a uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. Um, it actually really impressed me. I've always been a, a Project Fly person. I've always used Project Fly. If you guys don't know what it is, it's basically like a, a way to log your flights. It also shows you your ETA, ETE, uh, a lot of different really helpful flight information. You can put your flight, your, um, your planes in there, like in your hangar. It's all really cool. Um, I've always promoted Project Fly and I always really liked it. And I still believe in it. Uh, it just, you know, it's gotten better. It updated recently and, and then Sim Toolkit Pro came along. And uh, I was like, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with Project Fly. I'm going to stick with it. And then some of you guys in chat recommended me to try Sim Toolkit Pro, and then I did. I do actually listen to you guys. I, I do actually take some of your suggestions. So I checked it out. I tried it out. At first, I was a little unimpressed. I was like, eh, I don't really know. I like Project Fly. I like the UI. I like how it looks. It looks a little bit more professional. But then they made a few updates. Not very many. Not they didn't, Some small updates, but... I started messing around with it even more, and now I am definitely sold. Um, I'm sorry, Project Fly. I know you guys were very hard on it. Um, don't give up. Keep pushing. Keep putting it out there. It's a great option for people to use. Uh, but Sim Toolkit is basically a direct um, competition with it. And uh, right now, I just I like it better. I like that I can see my entire flight plan. I can't show it to you guys right now on, on stream. Maybe later. Uh, but it shows your entire flight plan uh, with the waypoints, out to restrictions, on a live map as well as you, the ATC on VATSIM, uh, other traffic on VATSIM, other traffic on Sim Toolkit Pro. It even shows you the ground charts. Now that's something I didn't know. Uh, if you zoom in far enough to an airport, you can actually see the ground chart of the airport with all of the taxiway uh, number uh, letters and, and numbers and everything like that. And I was like, oh heck yeah, I'm done. This is, this is mine. <laughs> um, so loving it, man. Adam Rex, yes sir, we are, not, we are online on VATSIM right now. Call sign Delta 116 or Delta 16 Heavy. Uh, Martin, I'm using Navigraph. You, if you want to have the charts in your avatar, you actually need to have a Navigraph subscription. Uh, it is paid. It's like, what is it? What is it? Like $9 a month or something like that. Um, but you can get all the charts for all the airports like in the whole world. Um, it also syncs right into your X plane. They, ha they have an iPad, iPod, iPad app. I don't have an iPad, so I can't use the app, but I wish I did so I could use the app. It'd be so much easier. Um, but it's very helpful, extremely helpful. Um, I don't know 
you know, it's really hard not to do for me not to do it with, without the charts, especially if you're flying online. If you're flying offline, don't worry about it. Seriously, don't worry about it if you fly offline. But if you fly online on Vatsim or on Pilot Edge, um, they want you to have the charts when you come into an airport. And so make sure you have it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure we have, we're on the radio. Salt Lake City traffic, Delta 116 heavy, taxiing to 16 left, Salt Lake City. Global, yes sir, we just started taxiing. We still got a ways to go. It's not a long flight, I believe. Airtime today is one hour and 26 minutes but i'm actually gonna try to to get there in like one hour <laughs> um we're gonna see if we can get there a little bit faster what time is it three yeah if we can get there in one hour that would be perfect do i recommend sky vector absolutely bro sky vector is free you can see weather data on there like all the time uh it has charts as well only time i would say i wouldn't recommend sky vector or, or i mean or at least not as much is if you're flying outside the US because once you get outside the US like Canada or Mexico or anywhere else in the world um, you start to lose quality I guess when I say quality I mean you don't get as much information as you get in the US for Sky Vector I wish that they could partner with the other airspaces in the other countries to, to get the same charts from them as well because I really hate back, back before I had a Navigraph subscription I really hated um, having to search the internet um, for charts for like Canada airports or charts for Europe. Um, it was always a headache to find them. You have to search the airport, right? And then you search uh, charts. And then you would get some charts that are like five years old. Um, so it was, it was annoying for sure, but that's just the way I had to do it. And if you don't have Navigraph or some type of uh, chart subscription, that's the way you need to do it. You can find charts for free. They just may be outdated. Um, so. Don't feel like you have to do it if you don't have the money to do it. You can still be realistic and use charts, um, but you just may have outdated charts. I would say definitely probably don't use Pilot Edge. I'm not sure if they'll let you fly without the current charts, or at least some uh, close to current charts. If you're like a year old, you might not, you might be okay. But if you're like, well, honestly, a year old is probably too much too. But all right, here's our, uh, our entrance right here. We'll take the very last one. Uh, from my experience in my one flight that I've done so far, this thing takes quite a while to get off the ground. Even with a lower V speed, it still doesn't really want to get up there. So, uh, Aviation 360, how you doing back there, man? Are you uh, taxiing yet? Engine started. We're gonna hold short right here. Salt Lake City traffic, Delta 116 heavy is holding short. 16 left Salt Lake City. What's up, Christian? A350 or INI A300? Oh, bro, bro, A300 all day. I think they're right around the same price. And at the price point, I would say A300 for sure. You can see there's a Alaska 737 crossing the runway right now. So let's do our final checks. Um, I'll go to my checklist because I haven't flown this, flown this plane enough to actually remember what to do. So I'm gonna go back to checklist menu, normal procedures, and take for four takeoff. Uh, range required. We haven't done that yet. Yeah, we actually, yeah, we did. So that's good. EFIS options, that's okay. Strobe lights, we haven't done that yet. Uh, TCAS is already set to TARA. Let's go back one more time. And take off chrono. Ooh, I would definitely have forgotten that because I always forget. I don't even know where the chrono is. I honestly don't even know where the chrono is. We're not going to worry. <laughs> We're not going to worry about it. We're not going to worry about it because I don't know where it is. All right, flight plan is here. All right, cool. There's that discontinuity we talked about. Uh, we probably could get rid of it, honestly. Let's see if we can get rid of it. Uh, how do I do that? I don't know how to get rid of it, so we're just not going to worry about it. <laughs> we'll just fly. Uh, what's the heading that we had again? The heading was on the departure. The heading was uh, 160. So it's set 160 in our heading. One six zero, beautiful. All right, beautiful. We'll go to nineteen thousand. That sounds good to me. Hold on, don't change. Ah, oh, screw it. All right, and uh, all right, RTO set. Any skid is set. Flaps are set. Let's do a real quick flight control check, and we'll get out of here, guys. How about that? Um, I do have the camera on the joy on the yo the joystick, side stick on the side stick today. So let's get that up as we do our flight control check. Let's see if it's working. It might be dark. Let's see. No, it's not dark. It's in a bit of a different position this time, guys. So I do apologize. I didn't have time to like 
really rig it up, so we'll do a quick check. All right, forward up, right, forward left, up, and down. And we can check my rudder as well, which is actually on the pedals, so I'm not actually turning. I'm using the twist for the uh, nose wheel and the nose wheel only. Once I finish, uh, actually, once we get on the runway, I'll turn off the nose wheel steering, and then we'll do that. So, all right, we are ready to go in this beautiful bird. So, park and brake release. We'll leave you guys on the uh, on the side stick camera for for now as we take off. Salt Lake City traffic, Delta 116 Heavy is departing runway 16 left to south. Salt Lake City traffic. All right, so let's go. We do need our lights on. Turn them all on. Strobes. Boom. If I made an airline, it would be called Blue Arrow, <laughs> for sure. Like seriously, if I made an airline in real life, which I think would be a pretty cool thing to do, like I wouldn't mind having an airline in real life, uh, I would definitely name it Blue Arrow, absolutely. Blue Arrow Charters, most likely Blue Arrow Charters, because I would probably start off with a smaller, smaller company. All right, flight director is on. We're ready, babe, we're lined up. All right, gonna lock it. There it is. And toga. Oh, wait, she sounds amazing. We still not V1 yet. V1. There it is. Rotate. Positive climb, girl. Again, airport elevation is pretty high, so we're already at 5,000 feet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit set the autopilot, which I don't actually have mapped to this. Uh... Oh, shoot, I didn't want to do that. I don't have mapped to this joystick yet on this plane. I could. Auto throttle works, but the autopilot buttons work. So I gotta hit autopilot here and put it on the heading. Throttle climb. All right, we're hands free. All right, now we need to go direct to uh, Hopto. So I'm gonna go to do, 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 direct to and not manual, but we wanna go to Hopto and then insert that. Insert. And now we sh it should just do it. Yeah, all right, so it says navigation right here. So now it's going, it's following the nav. We'll go flaps up as well. And then we'll change camera. There it is, guys, we're airborne. This thing looks heavy, bro. Like, you see how it flies? How it climbs? Jeez. All right, so we're climbing. We're gonna probably climb out. It looks like it's put it at 24, 250 knots. Um, honestly, I think I wanna manually do that. Yeah, I wanna manually do that, cause it's at 250. That's that's not bad. Eh. 
we'll, we'll let it do its thing for a while. We'll, we'll let it do your thing, bro. Do your thing. There you go. Do your thing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother you. you. Need to put that plane on a diet. That's for sure. Yeah, man. All right. So uh, we're we'll going just just go ahead and put in our our crews. That's what I was trying to do earlier. There we go. So we're gonna change this from hundreds to thousands, and we'll go all the way up to forty thousand feet. About the same as I think we flew yesterday in a 787. These things are pretty close when it comes to how fast they go. We'll make our range a bit uh, wider. We can do terrain map if we want. Uh, oh, that looks nice. One thing I do like about this plane is it has the, uh, the uh, what's this thing called? The vertical track as well, so you can kind of see where you're going to be in 30 miles, and 20 miles, and 40 miles. There's 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and knock out those lights. Strobe should be on. Landing, uh, see, where is that at? Right here, runway turn offs, off. The nose light coming off. Landing light coming off and a wing light coming off. We'll leave the uh, we'll leave off the logo lights and we'll only leave on the nav, beacon, and strobe. Seatbelt sounds stay on for now. Uh, make sure the air hauler is tracking us. It is, beautiful. And if we want to, there is a uh, cabin announcements. I haven't actually tried them. I don't know if they work. I think I turned them off when I installed this sound pack. Yeah, I did. Uh, Zachary, I'll show you real quick right right now. So the track IR clip is right here on my headphones. You see this right here? See this little device thingy, my jigger. So I believe you can wear it on the top part, or you can even wear it like down here uh, on your headphones. But uh, basically, you wear it on your head right here, and as you look around, actually, I can I can show you if we move back to the cockpit where I have it activated. There it is. All right, so I'm centering it by hitting F12 by default. And uh, yeah, so as I move my head my head around or the headphones around, it's tracking it. So I and I still believe in my opinion this is the best um, option before I below VR, you know what I mean? Like, if you can't fly VR, like, this is the best option because you have control. Like, as I lift it up and down, look at this. I can kind of peek over. You know what I mean? I can look back. Like, that's cool, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, I've had this for, for years now. And I've been very been beneficial. For airliners, it's not, you know, as important. I mean, airliners, you can, you know, look around and do things, right? Um, but... It's, it's easy to just go ahead and set key mappings to do look at the place you want to look at, right? Rather than um, buy and track or do that. But if you're flying a lot of via via far flying like GA, where you kind of need better uh, spatial, uh, you need to know your surroundings a bit better in, in GA, in my opinion, um, that's where it really matters. As well as if you fly like fighter jets and helicopters. Helicopters, in my opinion, is absolutely necessary. You don't have to have it, but like it's with the helicopters, you need to know exactly where you're landing. You need to be able to look down and watch the ground as you're trying to land with the collective. And I think it's extremely important to have um, to have track IR if you can. If you can't, then you can figure another way out to just make it happen. People do it all the time without track IR, so it's not necessary. But in my, I, for me, I've like yeah. So flying helicopters is easier with track IR. Jets, um, in my opinion, is still necessary, especially if you're doing DCS, you're doing dog fighting. It's very important to be able to, to have your uh, be able to look around easily. Uh, if you're using DCS without track track uh, head tracking, then what happens is you have to like use your mouse to look around, and you're still trying to control your joystick or whatever you're using to to operate the plane. So it's just difficult doing it that way. But all right, guys, we are climbing out of Salt Lake City. If you just join us in the Flight Factor A350 in the Delta livery. We're on VATSIM, call sign Delta 116. Today's flight should be just around an hour. We're going to try to get there as fast as we can. Uh, only one leg today for me, guys. Um, and then we'll be done for today. But uh, hopefully everything goes well. Landing in LAX. I've had a, a very bad streak of bad landings in the, this, this past two weeks, honestly. And I'm hoping to be able to, to redeem it. I'm still trying to redeem myself. Honestly, I did some more flights last night off stream and I had some decent landings. Um, but I need to redeem myself on stream for you guys to actually believe me <laughs> that I can land a plane. Um, but yeah, man, it's been an interesting one. It looks like um, 
Hmm, I wonder if I can... Hmm. Let me see something real quick. I am curious... If I can add this in here. Hold on, I'm gonna make a new scene. I'm gonna see if I can add some, some, uh, some toolkit. If it'll let me capture that window, that would be pretty freaking cool if I could do that. Let me see if it'll let me do that. Display, no. Media source. Uh, I don't th I think it's display capture. No, it's not. Window. It's window capture. That's what it is. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. It's a... Yeah. Oh, oh, that's sick, man. Come on, man. That's dope. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. I'm going to bring this over so you guys can see what I was talking about earlier about Sim Toolkit. Scene. Is the rotating beacon fixed? I don't know. I didn't know it was broken. Oh, snap. I didn't mean to just pop it on the screen like that. All right, you get out of the way. You go down. You go down here. Yeah. And it will make you, like, way smaller. <laughs> Here we go. All right, this is cool. But we'll come back to that. Let's, let's go back to our flight. I'm just happy that works. I, I tried to do the exact same thing on Project Fly, and it didn't work, surprisingly. Uh, what do I think about the the triple seven X? I think it's a great plane. I think it's a cool plane. Um, looking forward to getting one of those in the sim. Um, usually, I learn the most most of the stuff that I learn about aviation and about flying and about planes in general is it comes from flying it in the sim. So if the sim doesn't have it, I usually know very little about it. You know what I mean? Captain door unlocked. Let's fix that then. I want nobody sneaking up in here. Um, but yeah, so usually. I mean, I don't do like a lot of, like, I mean, I'll watch YouTube videos of other pilots, like real life pilots doing flights, um, but you don't learn a ton about the plane, you know what I mean? So I don't know a lot about the planes until uh, it comes into some, only thing I know about them is like, oh, they look cool, you know what I mean? Like the A350, for example, but until I flew the A350 in the sim today, I knew barely any, the only thing I knew about it, what, oh, well, only thing I knew about it was that it looked cool <laughs> and it was very modern and it did long hauls. That's the only thing I knew about, about, um, a350 but now that i'm flying it i know you know i'm learning more about it like the speeds you know the the weight um the performance you know what i mean like i'm just getting more knowledgeable about that and the same goes for pretty much every other plane i've ever flown on flights and look at the scenery though guys beautiful what microsoft flight simulator i'm just kidding <laughs> no but this looks nice i believe this is v states uh what state are we in utah Uh, Sean, I'm not using anything to mount my whole test to my desk. It's just sitting on my desk. It has uh, the little rubber pieces on the bottom that keep it from sliding as easy, but I don't have it. Uh, I don't have anything mounting it. But um, yeah, I haven't gone that far to do that. One, um, yeah, Arma is pretty dope with Track IR. I wish. Oh shoot, gear go back down. No, I wish. Uh, I wish Squad um, had Track IR support, um, but it doesn't because I don't play ARM anymore. I play Squad now for my first person realistic shooter. Um, so it'd be nice if they had it. Because when I, when I was playing ARM, it was pretty cool being able to like, have your gun mounted on like a wall. And you're just watching, right? And then you have Track IR, you're like looking from left to right. So you can kind of watch your back, which is pretty cool that you can like you can cover a lot more area without swinging your gun every direction. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I wish more first-person shooters would incorporate it, you know, um, and I know they will. I know, they, I know it's coming. I was super happy that Microsoft Flight Simulator added um, the track IR. I think that was extremely important. Toloto Papa, bonsoir. Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. Welcome back. Uh, how you doing, 360 back there? Are you behind me still? Did you get off the ground? Captain Reynolds, welcome back, man. Good to see you. Welcome back. Welcome back. I checked out your stream a little bit last night. I think it was last night. Jack Mack, what's up, man? I don't know if I actually said hi to you. 
I'm sorry if I haven't been uh, as uh, interactive with you guys. I've been trying to get the plane up in the air as soon as we could so that we could uh, get moving. It's not a long flight, but I also am on a pretty tight time constraint today. And I do want to say though, I want to give a huge shout out to everybody who was who came through today because you could have been you have you could have watched anybody. You could be watching any of the probably 50 uh, Twitch or YouTube Microsoft Flight Simulator live streams that are going on right now, and yet you're here hanging out with me, and I do extremely appreciate that. We will be on Microsoft Flight Simulator coming up next week. We got some really fun stuff planned, and um, definitely stick around for that next week. But uh, thank you guys so much for coming through and hanging out with your boy and, and giving me some company as we uh, attempt to fly the A350 to LAX. Uh, Muhammad, I do. I am a beta tester, and I do have my own copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's not the copy you see people playing today. It's the pre-build copy, the alpha beta copy. We did not get an updated 787 copy, sadly. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we, I have a copy. I just, I mean, yeah. I'm still under NDA as well, so I can't say much about all that stuff. Vaughn, you learn how to fly from me? Well, you welcome. <laughs> Chasing you in, in the Falcon. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Thank you very much, bro. I'm glad I could help. Yeah, I hope you are 2360. I hope you're able to stream uh, with everybody else. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a busy week next week. It is going to be a busy week. It is It's going to be crazy. You guys have no idea. Uh, I'm looking forward to it because I'm looking forward to like doing group flights and... and um, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh, formation flights, flight of two, flight of five, whatever. How, whoever shows up, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing like some, some stuff like that. It's gonna be fun. Um, but on the other side, on the production side, uh, that's what I mean by when it's gonna be really busy. Uh, Dennis, thank you, my friend, for the subscription. Welcome to the Blue Arrow Royal Family. Glad to have you here with me, my friend. Captain Isle, is the GTN 750 worth it? Absolutely. And I'm hoping that they add that to the uh, to Microsoft very soon. I'm hoping that they do. Yeah, uh, Muhammad, um, that's a good question. Anybody in the chat want to answer that? Those circles that you see in the scenery, like all the time, you see them all over the world. I see them a lot in the United States. Um, they're here, they're there. Uh, there's other places where there's even more of them. Uh, do you guys know what those are? Does anybody actually know what they are or what the purpose is? I think I know, but I want to see what you guys, if you guys can answer first before I try to put in my two cents, because I think I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. Take six says they're irrigation farms. Farming stuff. I kind of assumed that it was farming simulators. No, not, 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 not simulators. I was kidding. But no, I, I assumed they were farming related. Any more like specifics on like what that could be? You know, you know what I mean? And let's see, let's get some jams playing in the background, too. Yeah, boy. Uh, so, Jack Mac, uh, uh, Asobo and Microsoft had a Q&A yesterday. Uh, and that was, one of, that was one of the questions that came up in the Q&A was, will, will Microsoft Flight Simulator have a career mode? And they said no. Um, actually, I'm on the side of wanting one as well. And this was that their their answer was interesting. What they said was the reason they chose not to do it was because it's more of a game feature than a simulator feature. They said that that they, they made the sim, or they made yeah they made Microsoft Flight Simulator for flight simmers, not so much gamers. And that request is more of a gaming request than a um, a simmer request, which. I get, yeah, it could be, but at the same time, a lot of us simmers also want it. Um, what they were saying was like simmers already kind of have what they want to do in the sim and with the sim, which is true at first. But once you start playing a sim for years and years, you kind of want more gameplay abilities, right? And that's probably where a lot of third-party add-ons come on, um, different things that we buy. Like, I mean, look at FS Economy, Air Hauler 2, Pack X. Uh, all the different passenger simulation type stuff, the different career mode type third party apps. Um, so what I'm hoping, since the Sobo is not gonna do it themselves, I'm hoping that a, another third party app will use, cause they'll use the SDK 
to create some type of career system within the game i think that would be pretty cool um to do that i don't i don't know i mean i'm gonna continue using fs economy which is basically like a career mode um it's a third party um website that you link to x-plane and it does work in microsoft flight simulator um but it's still kind of you take your own route there's no like hey you start off in a 7172 and then you fly to ontario and from ontario you pick up a, a pack of oranges to this place dennis Hoagie 16 thank you for the follow welcome to the blue arrow royal family good to see you happy friday to you man good to see you guys um yes xcpl pilot is also has some great features and it works for vr i actually have it the developer sent me a copy and I, i'm sorry if he's watching i have not got a chance to actually stream it or make a video about it but i have been using it testing it and i i can't say that i recommend it only though i can only recommend xcpl pilot if you like flying ga um it does not support bigger planes than like a king air 350 i think um so it's, it's more of like kind of staying on the same range of FS economy where FS economy is more uh, geared also towards GA rather than airliners. But I think honestly, the majority of the flight sim community are flying airliners. Um, and so we need, and you know, air hauler kind of helps with that. Again, we're flying air hauler today. Air hauler is actually great for GA and for airliners, except it's just the multiplayer functionality um, and the community functionality is not as, as polished and as not as immersive as like FS Economy is because FS Economy, you can make money in so many different types of ways. You can make money by selling your plane to another user uh, for whatever price you choose. So I can say, hey, I'm gonna sell my Cessna 172 because I've been using it. I'm ready to get a new plane. I'm gonna sell it for, I don't know, $100,000 to some guy and he has to come pick it up in Houston, right? He'll pick it up in Houston, fly it out to Tampa Bay, and he'll fly it around Tampa Bay a bunch. And he's like, all right, I'm ready to sell it to somebody else for whatever price he chooses. Um, and I'm gonna buy myself an airport, an FBO, and buy and sell fuel. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that they can do in there. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I still, I know that they turned down the career mode idea, but I think that honestly, the community is gonna help Microsoft grow. All right, let me, let me tell you this. I wanna, I wanna really push this to everybody listening because they, they were, they mentioned it multiple times. Whether you're an alpha tester, beta tester, or just a community member who's gonna get the game on the 18th, um, if you have a suggestion, a bug, a problem, something a feature, a feature you want, please blow up the Microsoft email. Please blow up. The Microsoft email because they're taking they're actually listening they're taking suggestions they're putting them in a bin they're seeing what comes the most and they're actually trying to implement those features seasons something else that they mentioned in the Q&A yesterday it won't be there on day one there will be a snow feature so it'll be snow it'll get snowy uh, but there won't be an actual feature where like the the, the grass not the grass uh, the trees actually turn colors but they're working on it and they're working on it because that was one of the most requested features after the trailer last year, right? Same with VR, same with Track IR. Uh, a lot of these things that they're bringing to the game, they weren't planning on doing before, but now they're doing it because we freaking hammered their email account. It was like, yo, we want VR. Why would you not have VR? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, again, once you get the game, guys, like, for, if you see something you want, like, replay mode, guys, freaking replay mode. I can talk about it now because it's been announced. I've known this for a long time, but I couldn't say anything because of the NDA, but now that Microsoft says themselves, I can repeat it. There will be no replay mode in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can't believe that um, because I feel like with X people who fly X-Plane, that's like a, a huge part of what we do, especially on our live streams, watching back our, our landings and stuff like that. And it's like, for me, it's like, yes, like I want to see my replay after I land and see how I did, uh, but there won't be a replay mode. No, that's not to say there never will be one. They said they're working on it, but as of right now as of the pre-release and the release build there will be no replay mode so yes that's news for a lot of you guys but that's true um winter is coming yes up sonic uh we'll go for life what's up man thank you what up twitch family good to see you guys toxic take six dennis welcome to the stream uh dennis pokey yeah there's an nda still in effect for alpha and beta testers there are there's a press nda that has been lifted for certain content creators and, and and yeah for certain creators so they can share videos and twitch streams of um of the game but i am not one of those people so we're still an x-plane but thank you guys for choosing to come <laughs> anyways you could you could have been watching anybody's flight simulator you're probably watching it right now hey don't don't lie 
don't don't deny it. I think I'm, I might be watching somebody with myself on my on my laptop. <laughs> but man, it's beautiful out here. Yes, I finally picked up the A350. I actually had a bunch of uh, points that I accrued over time. I had like 1,400 uh, X plane store points that um, that added up and was just enough to get the A350 without paying any real money. So it's one thing I actually did like about the X plane store is that as you buy add-ons, you start to get um, points and then you can use those points to, to buy whether it be scenery or planes and thankfully again like I said I had enough points to do this one because I was really debating honestly if I didn't have the, the points I wouldn't have bought the plane uh, but now that I'm flying the plane I've been missing out I've been missing out man this is a beautiful plane I'm loving it I'm loving it and since they added the Sith and Stars it's definitely flyable Yes, Wiggle for Life is correct on how to get the, uh, the thing. Matter of fact, there's another cool feature I want to show you guys. Uh, I was not going to use it in today's stream, but I just want to show you something that is also a part of Sim Toolkit. Well, that's what I was going to show you. I was going to show you Sim Toolkit. Um, is there's a map feature. I, we'll see if it actually works right now. Um, I might have to turn the chat off because it's going to be in the way. Yeah, look at that. So that, that right there. <laughs> that right there is a, a feature on the Sim Toolkit streamer tools. Another reason why I'm, I'm digging. I know I'm fanboying right now for freaking Sim Toolkit, but they have impressed me. And it's for free. It's freaking for free. Like it, by itself, this is enough to freaking get it, to use it. So, um, so yeah. So at the top of the screen, you see it says Salt Lake City LAX. It shows us the ATE, which I think says 40. It's kind of small on my screen. Uh, it says 49 minutes until we get. So we actually are at the top of climb. So 49 minutes ETE shows your altitude, the ATC, um, call sign, VATSIM network, all that stuff. There's a lot of other things you can add. That's just the only thing that's important. And that bar is actually a progress bar. It shows you like how far, so we're like a quarter of the way out. Uh, and then this map that you see right here, this is a map. Um, it's kind of hard to see anything. It's just a terrain map. There's different versions, a dark version. Uh, there's a, a, a light version. I just haven't found the version I like, so that's one reason we weren't going to use it today, and I'm still not going to use it today. But this is also Sim Toolkit right here on um, above me, um, tracking. It's actually my aircraft moving across the map, uh, the live map, which is pretty stinking cool. So, all right, it's gone for now. I'm gonna find a better way to configure that because it's very hard to see, and um, I don't like the way it looks right now. But it's very cool, very very cool. Scrolled up and found it. Uh, the SimKit Pro Pro work with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I have been told yes. Inferno Gaming, welcome to the stream. Good to see you, man. Have I ever got the camera director to work? I've actually never tried. Uh, I was kind of, I want, I was interested. Cause it's kind of cool. It's like, hey, you could like leave the, the the game alone and it would like change it for you. So I don't know if it only works uh, for like if I'm using default X plane controls. Cause if you guys know, I'm using custom. A custom camera system so i don't know if it would, it would work with with the custom camera system so I, i'd have to test it out and try it but i don't i don't know uh raven any long hauls plan for microsoft flight simulator not not immediately maybe um once we kind of get farther into the into the month um maybe i'll try a, a long haul um but in the beginning honestly i want to kind of go to as many places as, as i can i don't want to spend eight hours or more flying a plane and cruising in microsoft flight simulator when there's all this beautiful scenery below us so uh, I'm going to want to do some fun stuff next week, like bush flying. Uh, obviously, we'll check out the, air, the uh, 320 NEO. We'll check out the 787, 747, all the airliners. Uh, but we'll also do some GA flying as well. So definitely expect a mixture of, of things. It'll be fun. Uh, we may, if, if as long as I'm probably going to take, honestly, I'm probably going to take the day off on Tuesday. And uh, we'll probably try to stream. It won't be a full day of streaming. It'll be long for me. <laughs> Probably go like, I don't know, four to six hours. Something like that. Something crazy. Something ridiculous. Uh, Inferno Gaming. When am I doing Infinite Flight? I honestly don't know. Uh, with Microsoft Flight Center coming out, uh, it's going to be pretty full on the schedule. So honestly, I can't say when I'll be back on Microsoft Flight. On, on Infinite Flight. I should test Microsoft's flight simulator. They have an A350. They don't have an A350 available on Microsoft right now. 
The longest fight I've done in the A350 so far has been an hour and a half. <laughs> and that was like two hours ago. Again, today's my first day ever flying this plane on the X plane. Bro, Aviation 360, man, don't worry about like really stressing out getting the, the deluxe premium. Like, if you can get the deluxe, like, get whatever versions you can get. Uh, I'm pretty sure they'll allow you to add on the planes you want separately. Like, so for example, like, if the only plane in the premium deluxe you're interested in is the 787, then don't get the premium. Just get the standard, and then, uh, and then you can get the 787 as an add on. Now, don't quote me on that, because I don't know that for sure. That's not confirmed. But I'm pretty sure why wouldn't they allow you to just go ahead and add on to your purchase later on. So once the marketplace opens back up, you will see the 787, the Longitude, the Baron, all the planes that are in the premium package. They should be in the marketplace for you to buy separately. I don't, I don't expect them to be very expensive. Um, you'll probably definitely get better, uh, a better deal getting the premium edition. Again, that's 40, what, 30, 40 planes for $120? I mean, again, if you add that up, you know, 30 times 120, that's, you know, that's how much the average X-Plane P3D plane costs. It's not even study level. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, Lucas, you can get the Microsoft Flight Simulator for $1 if you use the uh, Xbox Game Pass. And on the Xbox subject, apparently, I thought that on release, they were going to get, we're going to, uh, I thought that on release day, Xbox was also going to get the sim but apparently they're not all right let's get the speed up we're going mach point eight three i'm gonna go eight four in fact we'll go eight eight holy crap baby eight eight heck yeah blazing we're about to move right now we on the move right now 10 hours from australia to the philippines uh try visiting stream sometimes in manila that's pretty cool uh i probably will you know now that microsoft is coming out um, honestly, my range is going to extend. Uh, I do want to, you got to mention that. As you guys know, I haven't really gone to as many places as I, as I should have. Um, not because I don't want to, because I just, you know, scenery, scenery wise. So now that Microsoft is going to provide the scenery, um, I'm definitely going to be flying to a wider range of places on the, on the, on the world, in the world. And I'm looking forward to it. That's one of my, that's one of the main things that I'm personally looking forward to. Uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the wide range of places that I can go now um, that I don't have to worry about downloading scenery for anymore. Because again, before, I would be like, alright, if we want to fly in Japan, I need to fly, I need to download freaking 20 gigabytes of Japanese scenery. Um, but now I don't have to worry about that, right? So. Oh yeah, we're going warp speed now, baby. Warp speed. Yes, it will be more expensive to buy the airport separately than to have it in the premium, but you can still get them. Dennis, no problem, man. Thank you for coming through and stopping by, bro. I do absolutely appreciate it, bro. And uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to come visit uh, Hong Kong sometime. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Until next time, my friend. Do I think the iPad buttons will work day one? No, I don't think so. Black Raven, Fofo6, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Blue Airway family. It's good to have you. Good to see you. Imagine me flying from Sydney to Houston. Ah, uh, if I did that, that would be like, all right, I have to leave for the day, and I would just let the plane fly. It wouldn't be a live stream. It'd just be like, yeah, I'm gonna do some long hauls. Don't get me wrong. I'm gonna do some long hauls. I just don't think I will stream very many long hauls. Um, for me to long haul, I have to usually be very busy or like have like, all right, I'm not going to be able to do anything for all day or I'm going to leave. You know what I mean? Like I'm going out of town for 14 hours. <laughs> Let's do a long haul. All right. Uh, Romel, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for uh, the subscription. Welcome to the Blue Arrow Royal family. It is great to see you guys. The hype is real right now, man. I'm like super excited. Like I'm super excited. I'm, I'm very excited. I've never been this excited for any other game. I don't know how you guys feel, but I've never been this excited for any other game than Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, Jack Mack, FS Economy works right now for um, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I can say that now because John Fly <laughs> is streaming. He was streaming. I don't know if he still is. He was streaming this morning 
uh, doing FS Academy flights on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on Twitch. Um, and I've also been doing flights on there, um, secretly. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of secret things. Um, secretly been flying Life as Economy, so it's been pretty, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, Raven, I don't think the iPad's gonna work at all, um, by default. You guys should really check out the Asobo and Microsoft Q&A. They answered a lot of these questions yesterday. Um, one of those being like the, the buttons on the iPad, the, uh, the um, don't be surprised if the, um, what's it called, the passenger seat button doesn't work in most of the planes because they just didn't, they didn't code it. It's there, they just didn't code it. Um, they just, it wasn't a priority. Like all the things that they needed to do for a lease, passenger um, sign, sorry, the passenger button was not one of the priorities, which, you know, I don't know. Priorities, priorities, priorities. Wow, Craig, you've been on FS Economy over 10 years? I've probably been on FS Economy for five, I think. I think I've been on FS Economy for pretty, like five years now. But I love it. Um, I, I, go, I go away from it sometimes, you know, I kind of get burned out. I don't know why my speed won't stay at where I wanted, wanted to be at. try that um but yeah i've been on there for a while off and on hi champion investigations what a name thank you for the subscription though again welcome to blue arrow family are you investigating me today let's go outside got a little cloud cover out here i don't know where we are don't it stop we are in we're still uh, actually we're on the utah arizona border right now yeah we're right we're actually to our right wing is utah and to our left wing is arizona Actually, you can actually see the line right there. It's in my ortho. So <laughs> to the right is Utah. That over there is Nevada. Because <laughs> I don't have ortho for that part of Nevada. And then uh, this over here is Arizona. We might actually, Are we flying over the Grand Canyon on the way in there? I don't think so. Christopher, you finally got to fly it ruin your sim experience best thing i've done by far i wouldn't change it for a second wait what are you what are you talking about chris microsoft uh air max at air maximus i have the honeycomb yoke but i also have the thrustmaster tca side stick airbus edition um matter of fact if you look in the description i have my entire flight sim setup uh listed in there with links so if you're curious uh, what I have or how to get it or where to find it. The links are all down there in the, in the YouTube description. Uh, original, help me decide if I should get the A300 or not. I don't know if I want, if I don't know if I to wait due to Microsoft releasing on Tuesday. Uh, I and I builds has done a great job on the A300. And I have to be careful, right? Because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, didn't lose a customer, right? But at the same time, just to share my own personal opinion and what happened with me is I was in the same boat. I was like, ah, man, the A300 looks amazing. It does. Um, I've heard nothing but great things from the other content creators and from other people who have, have the plane. It's a great plane. It's probably the best airliner that's come to X-Plane so far. Um, so take that how you want it. But again, Microsoft comes out Tuesday for the rest of us. So it's like, should you wait, save your money and see what Microsoft has to offer? and then make your decision after that. I would suggest that personally. I would suggest wait, wait till Tuesday or Wednesday. Wait till you get your hands on Microsoft Flight Simulator and the add-ons that they have. See how much money you have left. <laughs> and then buy INI I, A300. That's, that's, that's my suggestion. And that's sort of what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna wait till Microsoft comes out, see what they have to offer add-on wise, because we know the airliners, we know the airlines have to offer, and we now know the quality of those airliners, right? If that quality is too low for you and you want to come back to X-Plane for some high quality, right, some better quality, um, more realistic airliner flying, then um, you may want to get the A300 when, after Microsoft comes out. So that's what I would suggest personally. Um, it's just wait. Yes, the clip on new subs is so planned. Did somebody just sub? 
a lot of my, actually a lot of my um, subscriber notifications or notifications in general are based off of Soul Plane because that's my favorite aviation movie outside of Tom, outside of, uh, outside of uh, uh, Top Gear. <laughs> I forgot the name of the movie. Five times speed for long hauls. Yeah, I would. That's not a long haul, bro. <laughs> that's not a long haul. Yeah, I agree, Raven. There's some there's some buttons that don't work that I feel like should have worked. Um, but I mean, I had to wait and see somebody mod it. Oh, flight training, bro. Christopher, amazing man. I'm happy for. It. I know you just what was it just yesterday. You got it canceled, and now you're up in the sky, man. It's amazing. Yeah, I agree. Once you go flying for real, it kind of ruins the sim for you. It does kind of ruin the sim for you. All you want is that real experience, not the sim, right? Obviously, you can practice in the sim. You can do a lot of things in the sim. Um, matter of fact, me and Nathan uh, yesterday after we after the stream was over, uh, we went to San Jose Airport in uh, says in the Piper PA28, and we did some uh, some yoke practice i went up in the sky just like if i was gonna do in real life we did some pattern work practice we did some uh some standard turns some stalls and we came back to the airport and landed just like if we were in real life so that's something you can do in the, in the sim but once you go out and do it in real life this doesn't match exactly there is a grand canyon oh hello oh hello a very fam uh, familiar sight Yeah, I don't like the crash, uh, Jack Mac. Whenever you crash or hit the ground too hard, it just goes and says crash. Yeah, I actually hate that. It's one of my biggest complaints with Microsoft Lesson right now. There's no crash physic. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, it's gonna lack in airliners. It will. It's gonna be. It's the quality of airlines will not be to the standard that you're used to if you've been flight simming. If you're a hardcore simmer. Even flight swimming for a while, it would not be to the standard you're used to. Uh, we're used to like, you know, we're used to this. We're used to being able to do all this stuff in the cockpit, right? You know, we got this whole thing mapped out, right? We got all our flight plans. We got the checklist in here. Uh, we got the freaking uh, this stuff going on over here. We can load the plane, do ground, passengers. Like, we're used to all this stuff, you know what I mean? Um, and so if, if you're expecting that, you're going to be disappointed. If that's what you're expecting for, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're going to be disappointed. Um, but it's not. I mean, even a lot of the buttons don't work yet they're all out of my in uh, i saw a meme i think uh 360 sent it to discord it was like the 787 picture and it had in op all over it was funny uh did the vat sim already work on flight sim so it, i don't it they posted a, a tweet um it said they'll be working on the 18th so i guess on tuesday um they'll be working i don't top gun thank you i said top gear um, but yeah, they'll be working on Tuesday, so I don't think that the people who are have access to, the, to it now um, have access to Vatsim. At least I don't think so. I could be wrong. Which plane do I prefer an X-Plane? I still really like the Zebo when it comes to airliners. It's, it's just compared to the other planes that I have, uh, it's just... Um, besides the frames and the lack of how good it is on frames, I just like the experience of flying the Zebo, man. Like you feel like you're flying a real airline, airliner. Um, they have not released any information at all, actually, about more airliners coming to the sim uh, from a Sobo. They did mention about you know PMDG, which we already know, adding airliners. We know Aerosoft has a CRJ coming, and that's uh, mostly it. But I mean, I don't know. They didn't really mention. They mentioned uh, doing world updates, so updates to different regions. Uh, updates for helicopters are going to be coming from a Sobo. Uh, maybe even a third-party developer might come out with one as well. I don't know, but um, they did, actually did not. That's one thing they didn't mention. I'm surprised nobody has asked them that. Like, hey, do you have plans to add more planes? Um, I mean, cause I know they're focusing a lot on a lot of things, but what about more planes? Any more planes coming, or are you gonna... They did say they weren't planning on updating. I don't know. Don't quote me on this one. Again, watch the, watch the, the full live stream they did yesterday. Uh, on um, the Q and A, they answered a lot of these questions. I'm just trying to like trying to paraphrase a lot of them, and, uh, but they they did mention that people were asking like, would they rather make like go back and update the current airliners and make them more realistic, or would they rather go and make more planes 
and they, they're basically saying the level of the detail they've gone into in the planes is kind of the level of detail they're going to go into. They're not going to go any deeper than that. So it's more like they're going to move on to the next thing rather than spend more time on that. They're going to allow third parties to go and spend years <laughs> of their time working on one plane rather than a Sobo doing that. They're going to focus on the bigger picture. Christopher says, yeah, now I'm studying, it's hard, but for some reason it doesn't bother me as much as schoolwork. Yeah, it's, you know why, Christopher? You know why, that's a great point. The reason why you're studying hard for flight school, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't bother you as much as studying for regular school is because you actually care about flight school. You actually care, that is a passion. When you have a passion for something, when you enjoy something, doing the dirty work doesn't bother you as much because you know the, um, you know what the end game is, right? You know how, you, you know what it, that it's worth it. Right, so with whenever it comes to like regular studies, but I'm saying you, just, you should still study hard for those as well. But a lot of us, most of us, some people love studying. I don't. Um, but oops, whoa, what is that? Um, but a lot of us uh, struggle to study on just general studies because we just don't care about the content. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, oh, I know my brain's all over the place, and I do apologize. But that's how that's how I think. One thing that my man Aviation 360 showed me yesterday was oh snap ollie with the super chat thank you my friend hey <laughs> so plain thank you my friend for the soul for the uh for the, for the soul plane thank you my friend for the uh super chat donation greatly greatly appreciate that man anyway you guys support is always appreciated we do have shirts <laughs> um and we also have the um the blue arrow gold member you can join that uh there should be a join button below the video as well as a link in the description in the YouTube to join the channel and get some exclusive extra video and uh, footage and stuff like that that I post. But anyways, I was gonna say, if you press I on your keyboard in X-Plane, this comes up. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah, so he, yeah, so there's this map thing, right? Which, you know, it's just the usual map, but on the left side, you can actually like change your aircraft, you can change your location, uh, weather information, you can, like, you can change the failures, the time, uh, weight and balance can be changed here, like there's a lot of stuff you can do here that I had no idea about, um, yeah, so instructor operational operator station is what it's called, if you click on I, it opens this menu, so I, I was like, I'm sorry X-Plane, I apologize, I've been playing X-Plane for years and I never clicked I, I don't, I still would, I still won't really use it. <laughs> but you know it'd be nice to know that it was there that's hilarious though yeah third part uh, add-on third part develops making a lot of planes which is good uh, I'm just I'm still um, you can't be Zebo quality for sure I'm still really hoping and I want to encourage people um, to develop freeware too <laughs> you know I'm really hoping we get a lot of a lot of good freeware for Microsoft Yeah, I agree. I don't personally see quality airlines coming to uh, Microsoft for a good six months, unless somebody's been secretly working in the background and has something ready next week. Like, I see either something comes out day one, or nothing comes out. Well, I don't say nothing, but very little quality airliners on that site come out for another six to 12 months, which is a long time, right? But, I mean, for you to get a really good quality airplane, it's gonna take a long time to make. Right, are we, oh, snap. There's a, there's a Hoover Dam. Right there. Doesn't look legit because I don't have like a model of the Hoover Dam, but that is a Hoover Dam right there. There's Lake Mead coming from the Grand Canyon out from behind us back there. And then off to our right wing, there should be Las Vegas. There's Vegas right there. Vegas International, the strip is going to be right over there, right over here, pretty cool, man it cleared up, it was cloudy and it got clear, no, no pilot is today fly guy, <laughs> uh, I'm not familiar enough with this plane to, uh, to fly it on pilot edge, I was trying to rush to get the plane going, I mean so far we've done pretty good, but there's a few things I didn't really understand well, and I wasn't ready to, to hop on pilot edge and, and have to deal with radios and figure out the plane at the same time. So, I, And I also don't recommend 
people to fly brand new planes that they don't know anything about on pilot edge. Like, you know, do a couple flights, get comfortable with the plane first, and then go on pilot edge. Ooh, if you have two PPL licenses, two private pilot licenses for two nations, could you fly to an, to other nations like UK to Netherlands? I've always actually wondered about that, how that works. Like if you have a, a I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it would work. I mean, oh, look at that. Uh, I guess it would work because I mean, the airline pilots or whoever they get a they get a license for their country. They wouldn't have to get another license just to land in like the UK. I don't think. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think you need a license, uh, like a separate license just to land there. I don't think. I mean, don't quote me on that. It just makes sense to me. If you're buying your PC in December, you're going to immediately buy Microsoft. Yeah, bro. Go for it. G-Double Aviation Group, what's up? Thank you for the subscription. Welcome to the Blue Arrow family. Sadly, for whatever reason, they didn't pop up. Um, maybe you have your stuff on private. There's a United A3 something flying on there. He's pretty low. He's on the deck. One thing I like about the traffic global, I actually get to see traffic when I'm in route. But yeah, we're on VATSIM though today. There's, I don't think there's any ATC out here. Oh, is that you? There he is! My friend, yes sir, on the way over there. I guess yeah, I love how somebody finally noticed that I'm using nothing but soul plane <laughs> gifts for my notifications. Thank you, my friend, and welcome to the Blue Arrow Royal family. Glad to have you. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Welcome, welcome aboard, guys. We're gonna have a good time next week. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We're gonna have a good time next week. Am I planning any group flights? Absolutely, bro. Every flight will be a group flight. <laughs> Every single flight we do on Microsoft will be a group flight. Like, legit. So, come through. Yeah, so what we'll do is... And we'll, we'll kind of play it out, because if it gets out of hand, we may have to do a private group. And if we do a private group, it'll be like a Discord-only kind of thing or something like that. Um, but we're still trying to decide internally with... Oh, yeah, with, the, um, with my moderators and, and my team uh, to figure out what the best way to do it because the cool thing was with microsoft with the first day i'm not gonna be on vatsim most likely right vatsim's gonna be available but we're probably not gonna fly vatsim we just want to go out and mess around and just explore try out try out try out all the planes so what we'll do is that you can add me probably most likely on microsoft you can, matter of fact you can add me right now on xbox um name is blue games 5412 i think something like that don't get it. let me give it to you later i don't know exactly what it is but it's blue game something um, and then we'll be able to add each other um, inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator and, and do group flights. And we can either do a, a private group where I, we all, I add all of you guys to a, a private group and we only see our group. We don't see anybody outside of our group. Uh, or we can just do a public group where you guys just come through and we just hang out and fly. It's kind of like how we did an infinite flight. Well, a lot of planes leaving here. Look, there's another one right there. There's two planes underneath us. That's a CR... No, that's a... Uh, it's like an Airbus. That's an Alaska 737. Or Airbus, I'm not sure which it was. It's controlling down there. We are pretty high. I keep forgetting we're ten, we're forty thousand feet in the air. So like that looks low to me. Fly guy, you need to buy a new one. Yes, Raven. Finally, we get to go to Queenstown. We're going to Queenstown. We're going. We're going to Queenstown. Like for real. Like it's happening. Probably next week. We probably have to go to New Zealand. That's one place I haven't gone. I've been dying to go to on X plane, and finally to go there. <laughs> so it's happening. So Vlad guy says you need to buy a new PC for Microsoft. So I'm making the investment, and I'll halt from buying add-ons for a little while, uh, while I make up the price. Could I run Ultra settings on a 1080 Ti or 2080? Ti? Yeah, you should be able to run Ultra, no problem on the 1080 Ti or 2080. Cause I run a. Uh, can I say that? <laughs> I think. Oh, no, don't break the NDA. Anyways, we'll go for life. What up, man? Good to see you. <laughs> Uh, Wiggle for Life, I can't answer that because there's a video now. Uh, just yesterday, actually, X no, Microsoft posted a VATSIM partner series video. Uh, and VATSIM kind of explained how VATSIM works, what VATSIM is for people who don't know what it is. And they also explained that we'll be using vPilot 
as a external client, just like we do now, how we use different clients externally to connect. So we'll be using vPilot is, I guess, the recommended, wow, this looks freaking gorgeous out here. Uh, the recommended uh, client to connect to that. So, so it won't be built in like I was kind of personally hoping, uh, but it's okay. That's okay, as long as the client works and it's legit. That's still the one thing they did not mention in that video yesterday was CSLs. How is that gonna work? What what uh, models are they using to pull in aircraft data? Because like, for example, I'm in an A350, right? Um, what model would Microsoft draw me as? Because as you guys know, VATSIM is a cross-platform thing. So if you, some of you guys don't have a uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but you still wanna fly with us who are flying on Microsoft Flight Simulator on VATSIM, you could still do that. You just connect to VATSIM, come to the same airport, and boom, we're flying together, right? So. But the thing is that my issue has always been, but what do, what do those planes look like when you fly together on that sim? So that's been my problem always. Um, so that's one thing I didn't answer, didn't mention at all. So uh, we'll guess we may have to just wait and see. Um, I'm, I'm, part of me is assuming it's, it's not gonna look very good and legit because I didn't mention anything. If it was good, they would have been like, yeah, yeah, we got good CSL. But since they didn't say anything, I take that as a bad sign. I think it's a bad time, but I am excited about Pilot Edge and VATSIM on Microsoft Flight Simulator because um, you guys know the the, the, the multiplayer in game is gonna be fun. But as we, <laughs> it's also gonna be kind of uh, sketchy and trolly. Um, but you know, I still like my my live ATC. I still like my realistic ATC. This is a screenshot, and uh, I gotta have it. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I changed my name. I found out a way to change my Xbox name from Peekaboom, <laughs> so now it's Blue Games. But apparently, somebody else took Blue Games. Uh, and I oh and so I just I put blue game. Los Angeles is alright. As long as the X plane doesn't crash, we should be okay. Yeah, so now you're gonna have X pilot and V pilot. So I'm still gonna have X pilot for X plane, and I'll have V pilot for Microsoft. So I guess I could. I mean, I'm I'm sure you could probably start down. You know? I'm wondering about that. I never used it. I don't know how it works. Maxi, yeah, man. Hopefully you can enjoy and uh, join me, my friend. Miss you flying with us. Uh, but a boy, why do the uh, X Pilot Bluebell CSL landing gear not show up? They look like UFOs. That's just how it is. <laughs> sometimes they work for me. Sometimes they don't. I don't really know how to fix it either. Sorry. This plane is sexy, guys. Oh, my God. All right, how are we looking? Where's our top of the set? Oh, we're here. <laughs> we here. Top of the set is coming up. Uh, all right, let's see if it'll descend with for me. Um, let's see. Yeah, so there it is. So we need to go down. Oh, I didn't even load up. Los Angeles yet. Yeah. So we'll just put in a, a, a temporary a temporary one. Let's see. We're going to go all the way down to let's put 10,000 in there. Look at that. As we're flying towards as we're flying towards LAX the frames are rip. Yeah, I'm probably going to get dis disconnected most likely. Alright, to 20,000. And uh, we're a little bit away. Or no? If we get disconnected, I'm okay with that as long as we don't crash. Yeah, we just got disconnected. I'm gonna set it to uh, descent. Yeah, so that should descend. I don't know what that little squiggly line means. <laughs> yes, hi champion. If you're on X plane and you're on Vat Sim, you will be able to see people who are on Microsoft on Vat Sim. Yes. Yes, yeah, what I'm wondering too, as ref, I'm thinking that the CSL will be the Asobo aircraft or the Asobo aircraft models, um, like variations of them. But again, we, I don't really know. Uh, like, are we gonna have to download some kind of Microsoft Asobo? I'm sorry, not Asobo, some kind of Microsoft CSL pack, some Microsoft 
the blue bell. Like I, I'm really, and you guys know I always complain about Vat Sims models, and so I'm just hoping that we don't. If they tell me to download blue bell, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip all the tables. Like, don't you dare tell me to download blue bell CSLs. You know those CSLs are from like FSX9. Like no, I'm not downloading those. Uh, if it's getting laggy, it's because Los Angeles is loading in. That is why. Yes, I'm in X Plane Vulcan Beta. In general, what do I prefer, flying Airbus or Boeing? I like both. I can't decide. Honestly, I can't decide. Sometimes I feel like flying Airbus is easier. It's simpler, um, but that doesn't mean I enjoy it, enjoying flying it more. Sim power to the stream, man. CSL deals, CSL DLC day one. Yeah. I mean, the CSLs have gotten better for X Plane, um, but they're still not there. Like, we, I was flying yesterday on that sim after our stream with a friend of mine. He was in a Baron 58, which is a default aircraft, FYI. And uh, he showed up for me as a King Air. That's that's with the the Bluebell CSLs. And the same for him. And then I switched to a Cyrus uh, SR22, and I showed up as something some random single air prop plane. And then I popped into Piper 28 and I was a Cessna 152 and I was like, oh my god, come on, these are basic planes that they should have CSLs for. Yeah, Airbus is very automated, it makes things a lot easier, honestly. Um, it's, it's definitely easier, easy to learn too, like if you're new to airliners and you're kind of trying to get into an airliner, it's not too complicated, like Airbus is perfect. Um, it gets a bit more detailed and complicated when you get into the Boeing stuff. So even with, with Microsoft, like, you know, getting to that, you know, new people getting into the A320neo, um, they're still gonna have some stuff to learn about just flying in general, but it'll be a lot easier than them hopping into a uh, 747 or even the, a, the 787. Uh, I'm using a 1080 Ti right now. Um, I don't know how much better the, 28, the 2080 Ti is or the 2080 is. Um, my, 20, my 1080 Ti is now, what, four years old? So, and every year I hear of a new version and I'm like, come on, man. Let me stay current for a little bit longer. Your default says no 172 and most use that. Yeah, yeah, very true. Adrian Guzman, reminder, do not pause the game on final today. Yes, I learned my lesson. Thank you for the reminder though. <laughs> I felt bad. I honestly felt so bad for doing that yesterday. Like, I've, I never do that. I probably should have disconnected. I probably should have disconnected. Look at that mountain. I think Palm Springs should be over there. Yeah, I know exactly where we are. I fly this route very often through here. So Palm Springs is right over here. Yep. And then uh, TRM, KTRM is over there by the lake. And then... Uh, Big Bear, which is one of my favorite GA airplanes ports to fly in. Um, Lima 35? I think it's Lima 35. It's like in these mountains somewhere. I can't remember exactly where it is. But it's very close. I think it's over here actually. Yeah, Reynolds man looking real good in the bus right now. Looking real good. How are we doing on our on our on our descent? Let's take a look at our arrival here, uh, which we still have not loaded up. Whoops, frames are just not doing good out here, man. We're, we're most likely gonna disconnect from that sim because we're gonna drop below 20. So right, you see outside the plane we're getting 30, 30. Okay, now 30. I was getting 34 for a second. Um, let's go ahead and we're gonna close both of these charts and we're gonna go ahead and replace them with the LAX charts. Now this is actually not only my first time ever streaming the A350. But it's also going to be, believe it or not, my first time ever streaming flying into LAX. Alright, we want, we'll get the airport chart, we'll start with that. And okay, we'll get our arrival, which we're already on, which is the, I actually don't know, the Angel. That's the top. Angel for RNF. This is something that I'm going to miss. If I don't have this, or something similar to this, and, um... And Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is going to be an issue for me, honestly, for airline flying. Alright, and then we also want our approach, which we're expecting 2-5. I think 2-5 left. 
All right, which one is 25 left? At the south one or north one? That's the south one. Okay, that works for me. All right, cool. All right, so I am pretty sure we're high. Uh, we need to be 280 uh, below between 30 and 24,000, and pretty sure we're above that. Let's, let's go take a look. Uh, let's go down to 19. Oops, what does that do? How did I get to that? Okay, well, I want to close it anyway. Oh, actually, we are between it. Huh, nice. Good job, V now. I'm proud of you. And you're even in this restriction as well as we're breaking up because of. Uh, yeah, cool. Legitness. Flanks, I got my PC from Main Gear. They built it for me, so it's custom built. Um, they have a, a standard edition or a standard version that they make, but I got mine custom built and they made it for me. They basically bought the parts and put it together for me and then sent it to me. So that's how I got my computer made. But it has like Main Gear advertising all over it. <laughs> uh, we don't know uh, if there's going to be an A320 CEO. I, I don't think so. I think there's gonna be a mod for it. I mean, think about how P3D and X Plan go right now, right? Like, there's an A320. There's there is an A321, you know, um, but there's an A320, right? That everybody likes and everybody mods it to be an A320 Neo. So I think with Microsoft, the exact same thing is gonna happen. The first thing you're gonna see, like a couple weeks after, is somebody swap up those engines for a CFM somehow. <laughs> All right, so there's a Big Bear Lake right there. And again, it's one of my favorite GA airports to fly in and out of. It's on the top of this mountain. And very cool, very fun. I recommend when we get to Microsoft Flight Center, we do a flight into the airport. It's been pretty nice. So we're almost there. We're uh, on the arrival. I can't wait to see liveries in Microsoft Flight Center. All we've seen so far is the Iberia livery. That's the only tease we've gotten so far of Microsoft Flight Simulator um, for liveries. But again, I recommend you guys watch the Q&A. They mentioned liveries as well. Um, it sounds like there's going to be a bunch of liveries shipping with it. Probably not every single livery, but it sounds like they're trying to get the legit ones. Like, they're not trying to do it unlegitly. Like, they're trying to get the legit, like, liveries and have the licenses to the liveries, right? So, like, in X-Plane, they give you the basic, you know, um, the house liveries for everything, right? Um, but with Microsoft Flight Simulator, oh, so, and then also with X-Plan, all, the, all of us go and make our own liveries, which I believe we'll still be able to do. Um, but they're trying to include licensed official liveries in, inside the simulator. So I'm uh, not sure how many of those they're going to provide, how many will be there on release. But I guarantee whatever livery is not there at release, give it a few days. Somebody's going to be out there grinding out liveries in Photoshop. And hopefully you'll be able to download it easily from like the marketplace. That'd be pretty nice. Alright, we're almost there. I actually see Ontario already. Sorry guys if you're getting, if you're getting laggy. That's to the uh, scenery loading in. Yeah, I agree. I wish I would let you preload Microsoft. That would actually save me some time. I could go ahead and download it, get it done, and then just update it whenever an update comes out. Because it might take a while to download all that, all those files. Why are we going so slow? We're at 220. What's the altitude restriction out here? There is no altitude restriction. 270. We should be going 270 right now. said 120 gigabytes for you is like three hours for me 
120 gigabytes would be, depending on how fast like the connection speed is and the server that I'm downloading from and all that stuff, that could be like three to six hours. So I'm, and then with everybody downloading it at the same time, oh, it's, those, those servers are gonna overload. Like there's gonna be some probably multiplayer issues on day one because I think they probably, and I may, maybe, I may be wrong, but I think they're gonna underestimate the amount of people that are gonna play this game. I think they can underestimate, just like every other game does on day one. They underestimate the, the amount of server space they need, and then you have major issues on day one. So I think it's going to happen. Just a trend that I've noticed between a lot of games, a lot of big games. Alright, we're almost there. Yeah, very server dependent, absolutely. Like, I probably... When I stream on Tuesday, it'll probably probably be right after it has finished. Because if I start downloading at midnight, which is most likely when we get the chance to actually download it, right? Um, if I start down downloading at midnight, I'm probably just going to have to go to sleep and let it download overnight. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, or hopefully in the morning, and be able to play and, and try out the final release copy. Thanks, bro. I agree with you. <laughs> Finally, somebody feels me. Uh, I also feel like the A38 is one of the ugliest planes ever created right after the Beluga. <laughs> but so many people love it. I don't know what you guys see in that thing. Maybe you just have a different taste. But I do not like the way the A380 uh, looks. You know what? Before we land, guys, we haven't done a, a cabin tour. I don't think I have any cameras in there. Let's just do this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> not that. That's not what I meant. Wow, I actually haven't even looked at all this. Look at all the safety stuff they got in here. That's pretty cool. Through the door we go. Boop. Boop. Okay, we're here. Oh, cool. It has like Delta stuff in here. I believe Vertical Sim, my dude Vertical Sim actually made this, um, this livery. So I'm not surprised that it's like better than usual. It has all the, uh, the Zebo people in here. <laughs> That's classy up in here, man. Look at this. Got that. The wine. Where, where's, where's Bapino at? Where's Bapino at? Looking nice. I got the wing view real quick. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Muy de boa. Alright, now I guess everybody's only sitting in first class. <laughs> Ain't nobody back here in economy. Very nice. The bathrooms do not work. Sadly. If I do make a livery for the A350, I'm putting blue arrow everywhere. <laughs> Since you can change the cabin. I like I like liveries that allow you to change the livery inside the cabin. Man, lots of food back here, man. Very nice. All right, all right. See ya. I'm jumping out. <laughs> oh look, perfect timing. We jumped out right above Auto Club Speedway. I think we've flown over that thing every stream <laughs> this past week. All right, guys, we're almost there. Uh, let's go ahead and get the weather for Stockholm. Just kidding. For LAX, I'm gonna read out the METAR for you guys. Weather in LAX is 250 at 11. Uh, visibility 10 statue miles, few at 12,000 uh, do, do all of the, 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 the temperatures 27 and then they do point six sixteen. I always get those mixed up, like my, my mouth is gets jumbled, uh, then all temperatures 2990 so let's go ahead and put those in and we need to make the approach mode stuff work 2990 how are we doing on, on the descent though? are you still doing what I want you to do? Okay, 14,000, we're a little bit high but we're okay. All right, 2990 is what we need to be. What are we looking at? So now we're vectoring to the final. Well, not the final, but the, uh, yeah, the approach. Coming to Crane. Let's make sure that's the next waypoint. Uh, where, what page am I on? Crane and then to Rock. What is, what is this? Oh, 
Okay, well, the fight plan doesn't have all the waypoints in here. That's great. Has Circus, Honda. So I think it, it just skipped a bunch of the early, the early ones. Yeah, so it basically skips all this and goes straight to Honda and where's Crane? Oh, wait, no. What was it? Circus. Yeah, we're going to 2-5 left, right? That's what we picked? Yeah, 2-5 left. Well, let's go ahead and plug in the navigation data down here in the nav ILS 109. And most Airbuses do this automatically. I don't know why this one does it. But whatever, we'll do it ourselves. 109.9. Oh, shoot. I deleted it. One. Okay, 109.9. Oh, there it is, and our CRS will be 251, so click on that, and 2, 2, 5, 1, done. Okay, cool, so that's plugged in, and really we could just go ahead and hit approach mode, to be honest with you, and that should actually put us on the correct track, but, but let's find out. I'm going to attempt to do that and see what happens, or it's too late. Approach! Let's see what's it going to do. Nothing. Turn on Alright, so we are. That can't be right. It says over 109 miles away. Oh, that's something else. <laughs> I was like, it says over 109 miles away. That is definitely not correct. Yeah, we should be able to catch. Well, I don't know if we can capture the localized from this far out. So right now, we're flying to Hunda, which is right here. We're going basically direct to Hunda. Which is fine as long as we get the Honda at the right altitude. Where do we need to be at? Honda, we need to be at 3,000. Maybe like at 1,900, I would say. So let's keep descending. Down to 1,900. Change that to hundreds. Nope, not that way. These click spots are so annoying. There it is. Alright, 1900. And let's get slowed down. To 220. Two and then everything else should be okay. You know, we'll turn our landing lights on. What up, world premiere? Thank you for the follow, man. I do appreciate all the support you have sent over this way. Landing gear, sorry, yeah, landing lights, wing lights, runway turn off is gonna come on, and in the nose lights are gonna come on if they wanna click, 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 click. Okay, there it is. Ah, I clicked it too many times. There it is. <laughs> All right, we're good. Oh, we're good. I'm okay. All right, we're out 40 miles out, it looks like. Let's see, what does this say? 25, 25 miles out. Let's check her out too, though, because I feel like we're high. At Turok. Ooh, yeah, we're high. Yeah, we're high. We're high. The regular descent mode is kind of weird. So what we'll do is we'll go to vertical speed instead. And we will expedite that descent. I don't think it's doing it. It's definitely not doing it. Yeah, we're 10 miles from Honda. We need to be. Oh, we. Oh, we. Okay. What are you doing? Seriously. I might have to do a 360 here. Yeah, we're not making that. Mm -mm. <laughs> we ain't making that. All right, I'm going to take control. Yeah, now it's capturing the localizer, but we're 7,000 feet too high. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off approach mode. We're gonna jump into heading mode. And we'll do a quick 360 here. Both of my parents, they suffered a family curse. Now as a father that got me on high alert. Alright, there's heading mode selected. It should be turning. By 21, I should be six feet in the dirt. Or in a cell. Or in a hearse. I'm thanking God that would be it got reverse to fit in there. I'm too it doing? The game dying, so I treat it like a nurse. It's hard work. I put God first. Not speaking truth is the way I reimburse. Cause I went from a bag to a bag to a bag. I remember me and mama. My heading bug is pointing to the left, but it decides it wants to go right. Okay, let's go that way then. That's that light work. Flexing so much it hurt. Used to rock him in dimes, not for satching down my shirt. I remember them days we couldn't wait for the first. Finally made me a meal, now we eating all Okay, yeah, alright, alright, cool. Alright, so now it's sort of following it, but it was following in the wrong direction. In the wrong direction. So we're gonna go right 360 um, for altitude and uh, see if it'll allow me to take over the vertical speed now because it was not letting me do it earlier. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's actually following us now. Cool, cool, cool. Let's get it, Cap. Yeah, man. What do you guys think? What do you think my chances are today? Planning the uh, A350. My goal was below 500. <laughs> oh man, it's been horrible. I, I watched a guy. I watched a guy last night. Oh, something happened to my scenery. There's a big block of nothing right there. Interesting. You know what? I think the whole LA. What the heck? Yeah, I am missing a tile. The most important tile, that's the tile that connects to LAX. Oh well. Oh well. Let's keep turning. Anyways, I was watching a guy who was flying the 787 last night on Microsoft Flight Simulator for the first time, I should say, um, with a Xbox controller. <laughs> and first of all, he couldn't find the airport. That was pretty funny. I know I'm making fun of him, but it was funny. It was funny. Come on, it was funny. He couldn't find the airport, couldn't figure out how to put the gear down, a bunch of stuff. And um, he freaking buttered that mug, man. I was impressed and surprised. He surprised everybody in chat. Chat went freaking wild when he landed. We were like, what? How the heck did this guy land? Not only did he land on the markers, he landed on the center line and it was smooth. Smoother than any landing I've done in the last, like, I don't know, month. <laughs> oh my god, why are we so low? Okay, we might hit a, we might hit a mountain. We're getting really close to these mountains right here. We're really dangerously close to these mountains right here. Come on. Come on, vertical speed. <laughs> uh, nobody knows when Xbox will get Microsoft Flight Simulator. It will go it will get there. But we don't know when. There's no release date or anything for that right now. Alright guys, you ready? Are you ready? Speed race coming out. Hey, even my terrain data is off for this area. Alright, I'm taking control, guys, from here. My plane. Okay, now it's my plane. Alright, I'll give you guys the yoke camera. Give me a second to click on the button. There it is, yoke camera. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. You can see good enough. Shut up. And let's we'll turn the music off. There we go. I have control and we are looks like 20 miles away quite a bit of an arc there man you know how long it's been since I landed on X-Plane default this is a perfect 
last landing before going to X to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is default X, default X plane, guys. Welcome to default X plane 11. Besides the plane, everything else is default. All right, we're getting a little slow. I'm try to intercept the glide slope here again. I am gonna put approach mode on just so we can track it. Here it is. Alright, there we go. Alright guys, I am no longer watching chat. I gotta land a plane. I'm focused, 100% focused right now. Okay, maybe like 80%. This uh, default X-plane scenery is really uh, distracting me right now. Am I going the right way? Where's the airport? Should be over there. Yeah, there it is. I see it. How are we going to do this today? Alright, I have the field in sight. There's a traffic actually on final above us. We are low. I want to put that out there, that we are low. But I, have, I do have a visual of the field. We are, it looks like 15 miles out. We'll just try to hold this altitude here at 2,000. Alright guys, seatbelts on. Don't tell me this plane is landing on the exact same runway one way runway as me. He freaking is. You punk. Yes sir, TCA side stick on my left. He's landing on the same runway as me. You lame. All right, now he's gone. <laughs> Bye. I got priority out here. I wonder if this is the default um, airport or if this is the Mr. X one, because I'm supposed to have the Mr. X airport. Alright, we're pretty much on the glide slope on the localizer. Auto throttle is disengaged. Auto pause disengaged. Again, I have the plane. We are a little bit fast. Pulling the flaps back. Flaps to two. And I'm going to go gear down. Uh, might be a little early. Uh, yeah, we're good. Flaps down. I mean, gear down. Auto brakes armed. How am I having frame issues if there's all default scenery below me? <laughs> Why is he woke to stream and good to see you? Alright, we do need to lose some speed. Oh, we just shot right through the glass. Look. I love that flap sound. It sounds nice. are fast and high. Yeah, I got disconnected from Vatson a while back. I don't think I reconnected. We are, we are having some frame issues right now, so I didn't bother reconnecting.
And it's, this looks like the payware version of LAX, surrounded by a default X plane. Alright, it looks like I have C2 white, 2 red. So far, so good. Still a little fast. Approach looks better, but we'll see. Alright, we're low now. Alright, just don't stall it. Too much wind. Pretty calm right now. Little adjustments. Too much, too much. Yeah, baby. Oh, that nose came down a little hard, but yeah, baby. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We needed a win. We needed a win. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Finally. Oh, I needed that win. I needed that win so bad. And on the center line too. We were a little bit, like, we were like right off of the center line at first, but then we got on it. Like right at the last second. Let's go, baby. Heck yeah. Tell me, man. You ma it makes you appreciate good landings more when you mostly get bad landings. <laughs> oh, man. You don't appreciate that one. I'm taking that one home. My friends and family, welcome to LA. All right, we're gonna taxi back to the ramp. We will have to cross two five right. And I'll let you guys know what the landing rate was here in a little bit. Even though VAT sim disconnected, sim toolkit was still connected. Dang, bro, you did a flight from JFK to uh, LAX and your your plane crash, or your, uh, not your plane, but your sim crashed? Yeah, that's the worst, man, when you do a long flight like that and a sim crash. All right, let's go ahead and clean things up. Flaps need to come up. As well as, I think the spoilers should have been away on their own. Yep. Beautiful. I love this scenery. It honestly just doesn't do too well for me personally on... Um, on frames, as you can see, we're really struggling for frames right now, but uh, what are we, Delta? Where does Delta, there's Delta right there. Um, I hope this is a taxiway. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, I love the scenery though, it's such a good scenery. This really kills my frames. Like the so Southern California region, I have so much scenery centered around this area that uh, I already, need every frame that I can get and uh, this scenery just is you know I think if I didn't have like the Orbix Southern, Southern California and all that stuff it'd be better but this is ridiculous to be honest with you because I have my my system settings turned way down right now like way lower than I would usually turn them down to because I knew I was flying into a frame intensive area look at that that's bad Alright, so just gonna find somewhere to park. But, we'll see. 
We need somewhere a big plank and park because we can't fit just anywhere. I'm gonna accommodate this spot right here. It's gonna pretend like this guy is not here. He should disappear once I get to his back. Boop. No? No? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, he did not want to go. He's like, no, I've been waiting here to depart. Oh, it was a dream line right next to it. It's a, not right next to it. It's on, on our right, the 787. there and we made it welcome to LA my friends hopefully you enjoyed the ride I'm telling you man I'm I think it's I mean I have more experience with the um, with the joystick and using joysticks when it comes to landing with joysticks I'm just used to that more you know um, I'm still working on my landings on oh how long has that been on start still working on my landings on my honeycomb but i got better i did it i'm, I'm gonna pro probably post a, a video maybe this weekend or something uh i did a landing back in san francisco in a in the 787 i got a negative 87 like i'm not even lying but obviously you guys don't believe me so i have a video i recorded that i'll probably post on social media later uh if i get a chance to do it and um so yeah i've been practicing landing with the honeycomb yoke and i've been getting better but obviously it is still lots of practice that needs to be done but let's go ahead and watch the replay and get my camera back up here we'll get the music playing again next all right cool all right so air hauler flight complete the passenger satisfaction was 100 percent baby that's what i like to see uh and our landing rate my friends ladies and gentlemen uh, final flight time actually turned out to be a minute, an hour and 12 minutes. And you lying, that wasn't right. Let me see what he, he lying. That was not my flight, my, my landing rate. <laughs> that wasn't my landing rate. My landing rate was negative 159. Heck yeah. 159, baby. That is like 800 less than yesterday. <laughs> no joke. It's like way less. All right, I think passengers should be deboarding. Oh, this spot's perfect for us. Yeah, boy. And let's go take a look at the replay. Uh, I think I completed my flight. Yeah, I did. And then once we watch, ooh, once once we watch the replay a couple of times, guys, we'll be out. Come on, bro. What was that? Ooh. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. That, that was so satisfying. Like I said, I needed. When, when you come off a really bad landing streak, you really need a win. And that right there is what winning looks like, my friends. I'm actually surprised I didn't even float. I thought I was going to float. The, the nose wheel came down a bit hard. I'll say that much. Nose wheel definitely came in harder than I wanted it to. Um, but as far as the, the, the gear in the back, that's a huge... There's a lot of progress right there for sure. Very 
Love it, love it. Alright, next view. Let's do wing view. Actually, before we do wing view, let's do tower. Ish. Actually, no, we'll do, uh, we'll do threshold. Something like this. Sorry. <laughs> Why is it making noise? There we go. Something around here. Yeah, nozzle was pretty high. Yeah, cause we were like kind of towards the left, and I was trying to make small adjustments to get it back to the right before we touch before we touch down. And actually, we did touch down a little bit to the left, and then they just kind of came over to the right. So we were we did actually end up touching down a bit to a little bit to the left of center line. But it was all right. And the uh, spoilers didn't come up either. Let's watch from way out here. I'm just gonna pretend like there's a parking garage out here somewhere. Very satisfying to watch. Absolutely, bro. You guys know what I mean? Like, when you come off of a long streak of bad landings and you finally get a good one, you're just like, yes. All right. I'm done. Next plane. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. All right, next up, wing view, and we're out of here, guys. Got to bounce. Oh, wait, what are you doing, camera? All right, from here, go to the left. Yeah, amazing. Love it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching again, guys. Um, for real, though, thank you guys for coming through, showing support. You could have watched anybody right now, today. You could have used this time anyway, and you chose to be here with me today, and I do absolutely appreciate that. 100%, um, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muito, bo mu muito obrigado. Muchas gracias. Thank you guys very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, until next time, guys, hopefully I'll see you guys in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, guys, nice, next time we are live. Um, but as I always say, man, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, or give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I will see you guys next time, next video. Enjoy the replay. I'll see you guys in the meantime between time. Delta A350 in LAX. See ya. Adrian Guzman, Wiggle for Life, thank you. Jack Mack, thank you. Raven, thank you. RJ Flight, thank you. World Premiere, thank you. Play, play Minty, well, thank you, my friend, for coming through, hanging out with your boy Sassy Gaming, thank you very much. Captain Al, thank you very much for coming through, hanging out with us. Nomad, Adrian Guzman, Jack Mack, HSF Waffle, 737 Pilot Simulation, thank you very much, my, my friend. PS, thank you. Captain Reynolds, thanks for coming through. Bomboso, thank you, man. Vaughn, thank you. Flanks, thank you. Adrian, thank you. YZ, thank you. Jamie, what up, man? Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming through. Christopher Ramirez, thank you for coming through. Enjoy your flight training. RJ Flight. John Flight, what's up, my friend? No, we're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> we're done, my friend. Uh, oh. No, I'm done. Um, but I'll see you guys hopefully in the Microsoft Flight Sim Skies. And uh, oh, yeah, it's going down. Peace.